Well, my name's Alastair Chapman and I'm up here in Iceland. It's the winter, it's extremely cold, and I'm here trying to film the northern lights, the aurora borealis. Now to do this I'm using Sony's XD Cam EX cameras. And the reason I've chosen these cameras is that they have a function called the slow shutter. The EX slow shutter gives you an option of 16, 32 or 64 frame exposures. Now that's like a long exposure on a stills camera. If you're running at 30 frames per second, a 64 frame exposure is almost a two second uh, long opening of the shutter. So that means the camera is very, very sensitive, works really, really well in low light. Now the Northern Lights, the Aurora Borealis, is very, very dim, it's very faint. So I shall be making use of the slow shutter and I shall be combining it with time lapse. The EX cameras have two ways of speeding up or slowing down motion. The first is S and Q motion, or slow and quick motion, which acts like undercranking or overcranking, that is filming faster or slower than the normal frame rate, than the playback frame rate. So for example, if you shoot at 60 frames per second and play it back at 30 or 25 frames per second, everything gets slowed down and I used that to film the geezers earlier on today. The time-lapse or interval record function allows you to record a single frame at a time. So it'd be one frame every second for a time-lapse sequence. You can set the number of frames and the interval. Now for most of the time-lapse sequences that I do, I use the one second interval. Now that gives you the least amount of speed up um, it really cuts down on the amount of material recorded on the card compared to recording at normal speed and then speeding it up in post. But because you have the minimum amount of speed up, you can choose to adjust the speed in post-production by speeding up or slowing down the clip a little bit. So it gives you much more flexibility. However, for very slow moving objects, or if you're going to be recording for a very, very long time, then you may want to use a longer interval than one second. So I use time lapse at one frame every second, capturing those slow shutter uh, frames. And then when you play back, you end up with the Northern Lights playing back, uh, speeded up admittedly, but not as much as if you were using a stills camera with say a 20 or 30 second exposure to capture the Aurora. So it's starting to get dark, the sun's starting to go down. You can see by the lighting on my face that it's, a, it's sunset. We have clear skies at the moment. Uh, let's just hope it stays that way. Well, sadly, it didn't stay clear. And almost as soon as the aurora came out and started dancing across the sky, the clouds rolled in, obscuring the aurora from view. And sadly, that's it for this trip to Iceland. I guess now I have to get the funds together for another trip later in the year.